listen, if you haven't made somebody upset by 12 o'clock with your offers, you're, you're offering too much. You're not marketing hard enough and you're not making enough offers. Hey, what's up? Joe here. <clears throat> this is actually the third or fourth video I've done today where I'm streaming live to Facebook and YouTube. Had a couple coaching calls, podcast interview, and now I'm doing what I'm calling open office hours. I love doing these calls where I'm just going to look at your deals. I love doing deals. I love helping students do deals. And so this is just a little opportunity for me <clears throat> to give back. And it's uh, free to a lot of you guys watching me right now in Facebook and YouTube. Um, but I love looking at deals. And some of you have some deals that you want some help with. You're thinking about making an offer. Maybe you've already made an offer. Maybe you're wondering, is this a good deal or not? Maybe I offered too much and I need it's not selling. I need to go back to the seller, maybe renegotiate a lower price or whatever. So what I do here is I will analyze deals that my students send me. Some of these deals are the ones we're working on. Um, some of them are going to be students of mine. But I'm telling you, I've been very, very happy lately. Um, business is going well. And uh, we're doing some big deals right now. And I love this because we're not just doing... We're not just talking about this business. We're actually doing what we teach and we teach what we do. So you're in the right place. Again, I'm Joe McCall. I got something cool for you too. If you go to simplelandkit.com, it's absolutely free. And let me share my screen with you. If you go there, you're going to get this Land Flippers Toolkit. And I have some cool things in here like my Land Watch hack, which shows you how to find the best markets to target. You're going to get my direct mail swipe file. You're going to get the contract I use to wholesale land deals. The option contract to wholesale or do um, get land deals under option contract. You're going to get my motivated seller land script, my land due diligence checklist, my land agent helper, which helps you find agents to help you buy and sell your deals. And also my land profit calculator, which is a software I created, which is going to help you um, figure out, analyze a deal and determine what to offer. This is easily over worth, worth over 750 bucks. And you can get it for free just by going to simplelandkit.com, simplelandkit.com. Cool? This is a call I do about once every one or two weeks. And I just love looking at these deals. I have some deals that were submitted in advance. And I'm going to look at them here and then I will uh, share my screen in a minute. This first deal was from Al, a student of mine named Al. And this is in a great county. I think it's Wilkes County, North Carolina. And I've got the zip code of the property. I have the GPS coordinates. I have the APN number. It's 2.8 acres. So whenever I look at deals, I get a handy pen and a real fancy, uh, complicated spreadsheet. I mean, um, piece of paper. 2.8 acres. Al does not have a contract. He wants to offer $6,089, 6089 The seller says... She or he has an offer for thirteen six hundred. By the way, what do you say to a seller when they say, "You know what? Uh, I already have an offer for this or that that's higher than yours." Uh, well, you should take it. Why haven't you taken it yet? Why don't you take their offer? Why don't you sell your property with a realtor? Uh, I am not a retail buyer. I am an investor. I'm in this business to make a profit. But I'm also here to help you sell your property. So I'm probably not the guy for you. And if I can't buy it or we can't agree on price, <clears throat> I'm going to give you the names of maybe th two or three realtors that can help you sell it. Would that be okay? Would that be fair? Yeah, that's it. So then I ask him questions. Sometimes sellers will lie and tell you they have a bunch of offers or they don't. Or the offers they do think they have are not really actually good offers. And whoever sent it didn't know what they were doing. Or you know once they get it under contract, they're not going to be able to sell it at a profit. So you just like, you know, you, basically what I'm trying to say is you don't want to be a desperate, motivated buyer. You can only do deals with desperate, motivated sellers. All right? So don't become the motivated buyer. Working with motivated sellers will make you rich. Okay? Make sure you remember that. And uh, when you got a seller that says, you know what, um, you're trying to buy it for six and she's wants, she, he or she's wanting it for 13 grand, I'm probably not going to be able to help you. I got to be straight and honest with you. I'm, my offer is going to, is embarrassingly low. It's going to be way less than that. Um, but you're not in a hurry to sell this thing, right? It sounds like a nice property. 
Why would you even want to sell it? You should just list it with a realtor. You'll get the most price if you list it with an agent. You see what I'm doing? Am I chasing them? No, I'm playing the reluctant buyer. I'm making them come to me. I, in exchange for the speed and convenience of selling their property quickly, I'm giving them a lower price. If they're not in a hurry, they're not, they don't have a real pressing need to sell. They just want to sell it. I'm not their guy. And I'm going to be honest with them. I'm going to tell them that. I'm not going to play games with them. And I really am going to try to help them. It depends on what they want. And I always tell sellers, you should list it with a realtor because you're going to get more. I never lie to the real, to the seller and tell them, your property is really only worth five grand. You know, I No, I tell them, you can get more. If you would sell it with a realtor, you could probably sell it for 13, 15 grand. If you've got a better offer, take it. Why are we talking today? Why'd you call me? Why haven't you taken that offer yet? You understand where I'm going with this? It's just, you know, it's important to play. I like to use the phrase, the reluctant buyer. <clears throat> Mr. Seller, do you mind if I ask you a few questions about your property to see if it would be something I would even be interested in? And the way this conversation is going to work, I'm going to ask you some questions about the property. I'm going to make you a low offer. You probably won't like it, but that's okay. I just want you to tell me yes or no. Would that be okay? Is, I, I just want to do business today, and I want to help you sell your property fast. Being upfront, honest. Always win, win, win for everybody involved. That way, when you make a ridiculous low offer and the seller's mad, like you, at least you warned them and you told them and you're not going to come across as this jerk. Nobody wants to be a jerk. You guys smelling what I'm stepping in now? I'm giving you a little sales training when, this, when we talk to sellers. You know, we don't want to be desperate. We don't want to chase them. When I was doing a lot of lease options, it got really easy to get into uh, vomit your, your uh, sales pitch why a lease option is good, why you should do a lease option. And I never won a deal. I never got a deal by trying to sell them or convince them to do a lease option. You'll never get a, a real estate vacant land deal, rather, if you try to convince them that they should sell their property to you. Okay. And you know that you're going to get 20, 30 no's for every yes. So you heard the phrase go for no, because the more no's you get, eventually you're going to get a yes. So you want to get a no as soon as possible because then you can move on, talk to somebody else, make another offer. Boom. Also, I want to tell you guys something cool. This I'm, I'm going to look at this deal here in a minute, but I'm so excited about this. I was looking at some of our stats in one of the counties that we're in. And I get students all the time, Joe, it's my market's too hard. It's too competitive. Wah. And they're, you know, what is all in a wad. And they're like, I, I, I just want to you know, smack them across gently and politely across the face. Like, what are you doing? Like, stop complaining. Like, you, you're, 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 you're looking for excuses. How many offers have you made in the last week? One, zero. There's the problem. Your speed to income is directly proportional to the number of offers that you make. So I could show you right now. Um, but I, I hmm, Is there a way I can do this? Okay, this is one of the counties that we're in right now. Take a look at these stats. And uh, it's a very competitive county. This is one of the hottest counties in the eastern half of the United States, maybe in the whole country. It's one of the best countries, uh, best counties in the country. Very competitive. Look at this. I've sent so far 4,354 letters. I got 60 leads. My response rate is 1.4%. Now, that's not that great, but it's not that bad either. And it's like three times better than what investors who are wholesaling houses are getting with their direct mail right now. I mean, with direct mail for houses and markets, you're lucky if you get half of 1% or a half of a half of 1%, 0. 0.0025, whatever. So like I'm getting 1.4%, come on. Now, yeah, that's not like, Joe, I heard you say you could get 3% response rates and I'm only getting 1.4% response rates. This isn't working. This doesn't work. It's hard. It's hard. I can't do this. All right. Look at look a little deeper into this. Look a little deeper, will you? We've got 60 leads. Look at this. 13 of them were dead. They basically said, F you, leave me alone. I don't want an offer. Take me off your list. So we marked 13 of them as dead. We still have 14 that we're, we still need to send offers on. We're running a little low on this. Um, sometimes what on this campaign, we're calling sellers first before we send them an offer. So we play a little phone tag, you know, 
Uh, but we've sent 27 offers. Do you see that right there? We've sent 27 offers. And how many contracts do we have right there? Three. What, Joe? What, what'd you say? Your what hurts? I got three properties under contract in this very competitive county from only 27 offers sent. That is one contract for every nine offers that we send. Okay. It's also, if you look at the, um, let me get my calculator. I do 60 leads divided by three. I'm getting one contract out of every 20 leads that are coming in or one contract for every nine offers that I've made in this competitive county. And I still have 14 more offers to send. I got two new, two new leads just recently in. And this is a competitive market. We're sending boring, ugly letters. Um, let me ask you something. You look at those numbers. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm trying to make a point. In a competitive market, I'm getting deals under contract. Now, we've not sold these yet, but we're going to sell them. We're good at that. Um, I'm paying $5,400, and I think this number is high. It's about $1.20 per letter, and I know it's, we're not spending that much on a letter, so I need to ask my assistant what's going on there. Um, $90 a lead. Like Some of you, maybe that is, you're like, oh, my gosh, Joe, that's a lot of money. But yeah, but if our average profit is $7,500, 15, that's, we're going to make about 20, 20 to $25,000 on these three deals. I don't know. Would you spend $5,400 in marketing to make 20, $25,000 in profits? I hope so. And we're going to pull at least two or three more deals out of this because we get a lot of deals from follow-up and this is a hot market. So these are going to be easy deals to sell. So here's what I'm saying, guys, like how many offers have you made in the last week? That's going to determine how much money you're making. Ask yourself honestly, how many offers have you made in the last week, the last month, every day? Your speed to income is directly proportional to what? The number of offers that you make. What's the number one rule in real estate? Make offers, make offers, make offers. That's it. That is the number one rule in real estate. So why are you spending all this time farting around with a website, with a logo, with a business card, research? You're spending five hours trying to come up with an offer. Let's, let's start making some offers. Where is this deal? This looks like Wilkes County, North Carolina. It's a beautiful area up there. Okay. And these are the GPS coordinates of this property. I like having GPS coordinates because, you know, it doesn't matter if sometimes the APN numbers are hard to get. They're not formatted right. Um, there is no address for this property. And um, from the GPS coordinates, I can look at satellite. Let's zoom in and I can see, is this property on the side of a mountain? Let's click on 3D. Let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to hold my command key down and kind of do this thing. Isn't that cool? I'm just in Google Maps. So it doesn't look too bad. Okay. Definitely looks like it's a buildable lot. There's a cul-de-sac right here. There's a house next to it. So I'm going to be selling this property. It's 2.8 acres. This is probably... It's in an HOA. There's probably some restrictions. There's probably no hunting. You know, they probably don't allow, um, uh, you know, um, tiny homes or RVs and things like that. So, all right, this is just going to be for a different buyer. And we're going to look at, is this in an area where there's a lot of activity? The other thing I like to do is, is take the yellow dude and see if there's any street views of the area. And if there's a street view, um, it'll be blue and there's not. So let's zoom out again. And let me drag the yellow dude. Okay, there's a street view right here. And I'm going to go to a street view where there's like a crossroad. So like it's intersecting that road right there. So somebody who's driving here will make a right here on this property, on this road to uh, get to our property that we're looking at, right? So you're just looking here. This is a real beautiful area, isn't it? Yeah, we've done several deals in Wilkes County, and they're very easy to sell properties here. It's just gorgeous. I think it's Wilkes County. But um, you know, I need an address because I want to look this property up. 
I want to look this property up um, on Redfin, but I, I can't look on Redfin. There's no address, but guess what? There's a house right here. So I'm going to right click on that house, go what's here. And it doesn't give me an address. What's going on here? Let me zoom out again. I'm going to right click on this guy right here and see if it gives me an address. There you go. Now I have an address. 665 Rockwell Road. I'm going to copy that. Let's put it in Redfin. All I care about is I'm going to click on that map, click nearby homes for sale. All I care about is I want to center that property on this map. If I scroll over, let's look at it. So here it is. My property right is right there. So if I zoom out, okay, you see this kind of road that snakes like this and then this other road. So it's right, it's right in there. Oh, so you know what? This is interesting. There's some vacant lots for sale right now. Let me refresh this page because my little pins moved. There we go. This property is for sale right now for $19.9. Aha. This might be the property that Al submitted for us to review. Um, $19.9. Let's look at the acreage. Why doesn't it give me square footage? Well, it's 1.02 acres. All right. It's kind of hard to figure out like... But what, okay, here's the thing. I just want to be, I want the property that I'm looking at to be in the general area, the center of this map, because I'm going to start looking at comps. And I'm looking at this, first of all, I'm going to sort it from low to high. And I want to make sure my property, when I advertise it, is going to be the cheapest property here. So I'm not even going to look at sold comps. Well, I will in a second, but I already know, all right, if I want to sell mine quickly, I need to price it around 15 grand. I'm going to price it at about 15 to 16,000 cuz I don't want it sitting on the market for a couple months. You know, this property right here, how long has it been on the market? 110 days and it hasn't sold yet. Let's look at a sales history. Sometimes you can see in the history, you know, the price drops or go pending or not. Um, and, and this, there's another property here. So there's a lot of properties for sale in the subdivision that makes me a little nervous if I zoom out again. So here's another property for sale for 18.5, 19.9, 19.9. All right, so let's look at solds. Look at solds last three months. Oh, look at this. 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, 8,000, huh? Let's go back six months. Let's go back a year. Sometimes I like to go back and get as many as I can. And uh, here's, I'm sorting low to high. So I'm looking at 6,000, 6,200, 6,500, 6,500. So I know I'm going to need to be at the lower end of this. Sometimes what I like to do is take the average of the lowest six, the lowest four to six, and multiply that by 80% or something. So if I do that with a calculator, I know you can't see it, but I'm going to take 6,000 plus 6,200 plus 6,500 plus 6,500 plus, let's do two more, 8,000 plus 8,000 equals, so that's five, right? Yep, divided by five. So the average is 8,240, okay? 8,240 is the average of those lowest six, and I'm going to multiply that times 0.8. I'm going to offer approximately, I'm writing this down, I'm going to offer about $6,592, about $6,500, just based on sold comps. Look at, I just take the average of the lowest four or five or six. And then if I, again, if I go to actives, what's my competition? I'm going to have to, I want to list mine for... 15 grand. Do I have enough uh, meat on the bone? Don't know. Let's. I have a little fancy spreadsheet here I built earlier today for another coaching call. And let's see if I can still get it here. All right. So here's the thing. I just built this for my coaching call I did earlier today. So this property, let's say I list it for 
15500 I pay very generous realtor commissions. I'll zoom in so you can see this a little better. I always want to pay very generous um, commissions. And I'll give the realtor a bonus. See, again, remember this. I don't pay the realtor until and only if and when they actually bring me a buyer. So it doesn't matter how much I'm paying them, does it? So I'm going to give a bonus. I might even do 12%. Man, I want a realtor that's hot to trot that's going to work hard to sell my deal. I'll do 10%. I'm going to pay a bonus of 1000 bucks. I'm going to pay, but let's just say $1,000 in uh, closing costs. I want to make at least $7,500 wholesale fee. And uh, let's say miscellaneous costs unknown of like 500 bucks for drone footage or something like that. Um, there, boom. Boom, shakalaka. Now I've got an offer of... 3950. Now, if I would have, I said before I was going to offer 6500 because remember I looked at solds of the last, you know, year and I averaged them. Well, you know, if I offered $6,500 and I sold it for $15,500, I'm not going to make that much money. It's not going to be worth it my time, is it? I might make only a, a $5,000 wholesale fee. Now, which is not then, you know, that's not bad. That's better than a poke in the eye with a stick. So, but I always try to shoot high. I try to aim high. I want to make, ideally, you want to make at least $10,000 profit. But on this example, if I make $10,000 profit, I can only offer $1,400. So, you know, let's just say $5,000 profit. I can offer $6,400 which is 42% of what I feel like I could list it and sell it for. Do you understand what I'm doing this with comps and what I'm, this is so important to understand. When you're looking at what you should offer for vacant land, you want to, you always got to look at what your competition is. What's going to make this deal attractive? How can I sell this quickly? I want to be the cheapest property that anybody else has listed right now in the market. Now, you may say, well, Joe, you're going to try to sell it for, what did I say, 15500 but look at all these that have sold for 6000 But these are usually investor transactions. But if you scroll down, let's sort this from high to low. Look, here's some that sold for 75 34 Well, that's 12 acres. Huh. I forgot to do my filtering for acreage size. I'm a little embarrassed. Oops. Let's go here. Let's do land. Minimum acres. Ours was 2.8. So let's do 1 to 5 acres. All right, that just eliminated seven of them. Um, okay, so look at this, though. Here's my point. Here's some properties that sold for 13000 13000 8000 So this is telling me I need to be even more conservative. Zoom out maybe to get some more. Here's one that sold for sixteen grand. All right, so, yeah. I, I'm. What if I, you know... Here's the thing. Don't be afraid to be conservative on your offers. What if I listed it for $13,500? Well, then I just offer $4,650. That's it. There's other things that you can do where you can look at like average price per acre for active listings, the average price per acre for sold listings and come up with a value, you know. But uh, I like just thinking about what could I sell it for? Subtract my numbers. If I want to make a minimum $7,500 profit, okay, I'm going to offer $2,150. If you go to simplelandkit.com, I've got some software and a spreadsheet that helps you analyze these deals and make offers. That's what I would do. Now, uh, what's his name? Sorry. Al says here he was going to offer $6,089. That's still good. Um, you'll make $5,000. But the seller says they have an offer on the table. This is crazy. Remember we looked at this? The seller says that he has an offer on the table already for $13,600. That's definitely ridiculous. That's that's not an offer from a investor. It's pro Maybe it's an offer from a retail buyer, which is fine. Then sell it to the retail buyer. Listen, we're, we're not in the business to make friends. We're in the business to make money. We're not in the business to make money tomorrow. We're in the business to make money today. So we are talking to sellers. I don't, I'm going to make sellers mad because my offers are going to be ridiculously low. 
Listen, if you want to make sellers happy, offer them whatever price they want. Offer them full asking price. And you'll have lots of friends. They'll love you for it, but you're going to be broke. So stop worrying about what the seller is going to think. One out of every 20, 30 offers you make are going to get accepted, which means one out of every 29 is going to get rejected. You're going to make people mad with your lowball, ridiculous offers. That's okay. Get used to it. Get over yourself. It's not about you. If, if, listen, if you haven't made somebody upset by 12 o'clock with your offers, you're, you're offering too much, you're not marketing hard enough, and you're not making enough offers. This sounds bad, but your goal should be to make somebody mad at you by 12 o'clock. I'm just kidding, you know. I don't know, maybe not. I, Jesus made a lot of people mad at him. There's nothing wrong with making people mad at you. Don't be a jerk about it. But like, you're in this business to make money and to put food on your table and to f take care of your kids and your spouse. You, you're going to make people mad with your lowball offers. So don't be embarrassed. Don't be afraid to make an offer for $3,900 when that seller already has an offer for $13,000. Just say, this is what it is. Sometimes the seller, when I'm talking to them, they'll be like, um, well, they won't tell me what they want for the property. So I might say to them, well, what if... I were to make you an offer around three or four thousand dollars, what would you say then? Oh, they get mad and they get like, rah, 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 rah. He said, Well, huh, wait, a good thing I didn't offer that, right? So, what would you, what would we need to be at to make this happen today? So, I'm just kind of playing, you know, I, I say, Listen, I, I'm gonna, this is really, I know this is gonna make you mad, and I'm, I'm, I'm really embarrassed, you know, by this. I, I don't like making people upset, but like, I'm going to, you, I know you want 13 grand for it, but I'm going to have to be at like three or four grand. So are you just telling me we're, this is over, we're done. You should list it with an agent because my offer is going to be so offensive. You should list it with a realtor. They can at least get you something closer to what you want. You want me to give you some names and numbers of some realtors that you can call? So I'm not playing the, the pushy buyer trying to, you know, get them to accept my offer. I'm playing the reluctant buyer. I'm pulling away. Okay. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching these videos. If you like my channel at all, please hit the subscribe button. Get the notification bell thing clicked so you can get notified when new videos come out. Really appreciate it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Comment down below, all right? Thank you.